Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is that you are turning in to watch and worship with us today. Uh, I'm Pastor Greg Rapp, and welcome to online worship for First United Methodist Church of Hanover. I'm wearing the Hawaiian shirt today, not because that's what I usually use for worship, but it is hot outside this week, and it's warm in here in the spirit. So I want to welcome you to worship, and we're going to begin with our first hymn. Love through the storm. He is. 
is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. And every high and stormy gale. crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. A scribe then approached and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, first let me go bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. This is the word of the Lord. The message I have for you today, based on this scripture, uh, is a short one. And uh, Jesus is talking to the people. He says, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have their nests. But the Son of Man, meaning himself, the Savior, has nowhere to lay his head. And a bunch of people came up and said, Lord, Lord, let us be your disciples. But Jesus said, well... You've got to follow me if you want to be my disciple. And one said, well, let me first go and bury my father. And he said, well, let the dead bury their own dead, which I don't know about you, that one has always bothered me. Does that mean let the dead bury their dead as if grieving our loved ones is not important? You know, Jesus sometimes will say things like that, little zingers to kind of get your attention. Of course, he doesn't mean that we walk away from our loved ones doesn't mean that we uh, forget and grieve those that we have lost. But he always kind of exaggerates the point just a little bit to let you know just how important it is that following Jesus above all else is so important that even these very important things like burying our dead and, and grieving our losses have to come second. When following Jesus, our faith, our discipleship, it sometimes costs us something. And I just want to spend a little time just thinking off the top of my head about what are some of the things that our faith might cost us. I remember when I was a little kid, um, there were some decent cartoons that were on not just Saturday morning, but also Sunday morning. And um, I was, I'm old enough that there were only cartoons on those two times, and that was, that was it. And so I wanted to watch cartoons, and it was, no, nope, we have to go off to church. So I, you could say as a little kid, it cost me my cartoon time. 
Now that's pretty small and, ma- and minor. As I've grown up, I've seen some other things that our faith can cost us. Our faith can cost us our friends. You know, if my head is going in a very different direction from my friend's heads, if my heart is going in a different direction from my friend's heart, I may not be compatible anymore. Now, that doesn't mean that we never hang around with other people who don't follow Jesus, but it might mean that we may have to choose one day between our old friends and our new Savior. That could cost you. It might cost you your job. There are people who have taken stands for their faith in Jesus Christ. And because of the stands that they have taken, they've been fired for it. They've been ostracized. They have been picked on, put down, uh, harassed at work and in the streets. Our faith can cost us our job. It can cost us our friends. There's a famous essay by German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer called The Cost of Discipleship. And if you don't know who Dietrich Bonhoeffer is, uh, he was a German Lutheran pastor in Germany during World War II. And it was when, under Nazi control, all of the uh, Lutheran churches were nationalized. And they were given a budget, and uh, they had all the money that they wanted, and it was great, but they had to swear allegiance to Hitler. And there were some Christians, some Lutherans, who refused to swear that oath. And they started their own underground congregations. They would start their own underground, literally an underground seminary where they would teach pastors the true gospel of Jesus Christ, untainted by our politics and political loyalties, untainted by the power of the state. Bonhoeffer actively resisted Hitler, and because he was conspiring against Hitler and the Nazis, he was arrested, and like so many others, he was placed in a concentration camp. It wasn't too many days before the end of the war, and they marched him out one morning, and they hung him. So you could say that remaining faithful to Jesus Christ could also cost you your life. Now, it's never cost me my life, I'm still here, I'm still kicking, I'm still breathing. But when you look back through the scriptures, the number of people who are martyred, witnesses of their faith, who who pay for that faith and that witness with their blood and with their death. Guys like Stephen in, in the book of Acts who was stoned to death. There were so many people in the Roman Empire that were gathered up, they were thrown into the Colosseum, they were, they were thrown into the lion's pit all because they refused to renounce Christ. They chose Christ and they refused to say that Caesar is Lord. Sometimes our faith can cost us something. One of the things that faith can always cost us too is the comfort that we have in thinking that we are always right. That we are always have the world figured out perfectly. Faith means that I try as hard as I can to humbly see things through the eyes of my Lord and my Savior rather than through my own. And it is amazing how often when I look through those eyes, I realize how wrong I am and how wrong I have been. How about you? How willing are we to admit that maybe we don't quite have it all together? Maybe maybe our way of seeing it isn't always the best. Humility. So I guess you could say that faith in Jesus Christ might also cost us our pride and our sense of arrogance or importance of ourselves. Because I don't know about you, but I don't like to be wrong, but it seems to happen on a pretty regular basis. When Jesus says, let the dead bury the dead, he doesn't mean that we dishonor our loved ones What he means is we have to make sure that we know in this life who comes first. And it's Jesus. And this Jesus may cost us our comfort. It may cost us our friends. It may cost us our our cartoon time. It may cost us our convenience. It might cost uh, cost us our lives. It cost Jesus his life every drop of blood that he had. 
So this is the time in the sermon where I kind of wrap it up and give you something that you should go out and do. Because we have heard this, you can now do that. And uh, I don't know about you, it's been a hot, tired, long week. So I don't know that I've got that magic pill for you today. Other than to say, or ask you, what has your faith cost you? And what are you willing to give? Are you willing to surrender pride? Are you willing to surrender your sins? Are you willing to give up your friends or your job, your convenience, even your life? if need be. The good news about giving so much for Jesus is that Jesus really, truly is worth it in the end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know what kind of week you have been having, whether it's been a great one, fun in the sun, maybe you were on vacation, or maybe it's been a hard working week, or maybe you're going through some very, very difficult times, and you're not sure where you are going to find the strength to keep on going. Well, as we turn now to the Lord in prayer, I just want to encourage you to bring whatever you have to God in prayer. Your good times, your difficult times, your weariness, your questions, your searching, whatever it might be, let's go to the Lord. Let us pray. Loving God, this is a brand new day, a day that you have made, a day that is unrepeatable in all of human history. And we thank you for giving it to us, and we are grateful to spend this day with you in worship, even though it's still across the miles, and we have come to to recognize and accept the fact, Lord, that we will be worshiping together across the miles for quite some time to come. But we thank you for your Holy Spirit that holds us together. We want to confess to you our sins, O oh God, for our sins are many and great. We are imperfect, seeking to serve you, our most perfect God. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, raise us up into new life, Guide us, Lord, to look inside ourselves and see where we fall short of this perfect glory of Jesus Christ. Show us where we fall short, Lord, from what we say we believe to the way we actually speak and act. Show us, Lord, the disconnect between who we are and who we really want to be. We give ourselves to you, Lord, humbly seeking guidance that you might use us in this family and in this world and in this community, that your will may be done. We pray this all now, Lord, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the time that I want to thank you again for your ongoing giving to the ministries of First United Methodist Church. And I want to thank you for the way that you have been willing to give from across the miles while you worship at home. Again, you can give by putting your offering into an envelope and putting it into the U.S. Postal Service. Our church address is 200 Frederick Street, Hanover, Pennsylvania, 17331. Also, you can uh, give electronically. You can go to our church website and you can either have uh, automatic funds transfer from your bank to the church's bank, or you could use our Easy Tithe program to make a one or a recurring time payment with a credit card or a debit card. However you choose to do so, I just want to thank you for your generosity and may God bless you as you give. I wonder if I'll ever find my way I wonder if my life could really change at all All this earth Could all that is lost 
must ever be found Could a garden come up from this ground at all? You make beautiful things You make beautiful things out of the dust You make beautiful things you make beautiful things out of us. All around, life is springing up from this old ground. Out of chaos, life is being found in you. You make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of the dust. You make beautiful things, you make beautiful than you have ever been in any week before uh, up to this time. Uh, I want to remind you that if there was anything in this service that was a blessing to you that you think will bless somebody else, feel free to send them an email and a link and maybe they can join us in worship right here at First United Methodist Church as well. And now remember, from God's house to your house, we are one people in Christ. I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit as we go now in peace. Thanks for watching. Amen. <laughs>